Hello Healthcare. I just got back from Chicago Booth's Responsible AI and Healthcare Conference, and it's changed the way that I think we should look at bias in AI. I'm glad to say that you might already be familiar with AI bias. If you've seen movies like The Social Dilemma or Coded Bias, then you're off to a good start. If you've read articles and papers like Dr. Ziad Obermeyer's Racial Bias in Healthcare Algorithms, then even better. But if not, uh, we've got links down below that you can access, but I'll give you the short version. Algorithms that decide what movies we watch or who we are or even what healthcare services we need show significant bias. This can be racial bias, gender bias, sexual orientation, socioeconomic factors, demographics, basically any opportunity that there is to display bias, we can count on it to show up in algorithms. Algorithmic researchers have really dug in on this problem. For example, there is a uh, site called Archive, which hosts the latest papers in data science and machine learning. Between 2019 and 2021, the number of papers that are mentioning racial bias has doubled. So we see this interest from researchers, we see this interest from the media, but what can we actually do about the problems in algorithmic bias in healthcare? Well, that's what the Responsible AI Conference was all about. Dr. Emily Bimbenik, who leads strategy for the Center for Applied AI, gathered folks like Dr. Alondra Nelson, who heads up the White House's Office of Science and Technology Policy. They gathered physicians, lawmakers, consumer advocates, big tech, little tech, even people from small startups like mine. Dr. Nelson kicked off the event by saying that these problems are well-researched and our principles are well-known, but how do we put these principles into action? Well, before we address putting principles into action, let's talk about what happens if we don't. Start by imagining that you've been dealing with various health issues for quite some time. Your health system has a program that's designed to intervene early for people who have high cardiovascular needs. This program has been working out great for the folks who are enrolled. However, you've never heard of it. Somehow you weren't included in their list for outreach, even though you were just as sick as other people who've been notified and enrolled. Eventually, you visit the emergency room and your heart condition has progressed much further than it otherwise would have. That's the experience being black or Hispanic and invisible to whatever outreach or algorithms or approaches that your health system's using. And it doesn't even have to be based on AI, and it doesn't even have to be about race. One common approach to cardio outreach is to only include men who are above 45 and women who are above 55. If you're a woman who is excluded because you didn't make the age cutoff, then the result is just the same. Are we on the way to addressing issues like these? Well, Chris Bevelo's Joe Public 2030 is a 10-year look into the future of healthcare strategy. It's informed by healthcare leaders at places like Johns Hopkins Medicine, Geisinger, CVS, Optum, and many more. It didn't paint a pretty picture for addressing healthcare disparities. For about 40% of quality measures, black and native patients received worse care than white people. Uninsured people had worse care for about 62% of quality measures, and access to insurance was much lower among black and Hispanic patients. Does the future hold a magic wand that's going to help us solve these issues? Not likely. To hear it from Adam Brasse, the executive director of strategic intelligence over at Mayo Clinic, we're still dealing with some of the same issues that we've been dealing with since the 80s, and we can't figure them out. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up. No progress since the 80s? But things have changed so much since then, and we're collecting huge amounts of data. Plus, we all know that the data never lies, right? Actually, that's wrong. Let's remember that data isn't just something on a spreadsheet. Data are a list of examples of how people tried to address their pain or better their care situation. As we tangle and torture spreadsheets, the data does pretty much what we ask it to do. The problem is what we're asking the data to do. We may ask the data to help drive volume or grow service lines or minimize costs. However, Unless we're explicitly asking the data to address disparities in care, then the data are not going to do that. Earlier, when I said that the conference changed how I look at bias and AI, this is how. It's not enough to address bias occurring in algorithms and AI. For us to address healthcare disparities, 
we have to address bias that's occurring in the business of healthcare itself. It's not just on the tech here. This video is really a call to help fight bias in healthcare as a whole and to lean heavily on algorithms in order to assist with that. But what does that look like? Well, let's start by talking about when AI projects fail overall. MIT and the Boston Consulting Group surveyed 2,500 executives who had worked with AI projects. Overall, 70% of these executives said that their projects had failed. So what was the biggest difference between the 30% of products that actually succeeded? It's whether the AI project was supporting an organizational goal. Being focused purely on tech resulted in failure. Just so that we understand what that means, I'm gonna read off some project ideas and I'm gonna let you guess, pass or fail. Project idea number one, purchase the most powerful natural language processing solution available. All right, that one is a fail. Natural language processing can be extremely powerful. It is super powerful. Natural language processing is awesome, but the project had no tie-in to overall business goals or objectives. Idea number two, grow our primary care service line by intelligently allocating at-risk patients. That one's a pass. There's a goal that requires technology, but the goal is tied to an overall business objective. Okay, so tie it to business objectives. Great, we've got it. But what are both of these goals missing? They're missing any mention of addressing bias, disparity, and social inequity. As healthcare leaders, our overall goals are where we need to start. Remember that the successful project started with organizational goals and then sought AI solutions to help support them. That gives you a place to be able to start as a healthcare leader. The KPIs that you're defining for your departments could very well include specific goals around increasing access for the underserved. Grow service line volume by X percent, for example, could very well be increase volume from underrepresented minority group by Y percent. But how do you know what percent is actually a good metric to target? It starts with asking the tough questions around your patient population. What's the breakdown by race and gender versus that of the surrounding community? Questions like that are a great way to start identifying and quantifying that gap that needs to be addressed. This top-down focus should drive actions such as holding vendors and experts accountable to help meet those health equity goals. There's a video in the link above in racism in healthcare outreach that provides deeper examples on how to hold these folks accountable. But what we need to address further here is who all this is for. The patient, your community, the consumers that you serve, the people that you're engaged with, these are the people that stand to lose the most on this. At the conference, Barack Obama's former chief technology officer, Anish Chopra, addressed this directly when he said, innovation can happen only at the speed of trust. That's a big statement. Most of us in healthcare are already asking for race and ethnicity information, and many are now asking for sexual orientation and gender identity information. Without these data, addressing bias is extremely difficult, but many people in underserved communities don't trust healthcare enough to provide that information accurately. Let's be honest, for most of my life, that included me. I had no idea why I was being asked that. I didn't know what would be done with the information, and I thought that maybe the information could discriminate against me in some sort of way. So I would always decline to answer. I wasn't alone in this. Where I work, we process large amounts of data from hospitals. We look at the number of people who've provided their race and ethnicity to the hospital, and commonly, one in four people don't. I spoke with behavioral scientist Becca Nissan from Ideas42, and it turns out there's not much scientific literature on how to address this. So, this is a personal plea. Partner with your patients. If you've experienced prejudice, it's hard to see any upside in providing information and details that other people have used to discriminate against you in the past. A partnership is built on trust, so that entails a few steps. Number one is to be worth partnering with. You have to commit to fighting bias and have to commit to personalizing the experience or otherwise asking for the data is useless. Number two 
is to be transparent, be open, tell us what you plan to do with the data. Consumers are tired of the gotchas and spam that's come from uh, sharing their data and just using apps. It's time for healthcare to be able to level with them. Be transparent about how we're going to do it. This isn't Facebook, we're here to help. If it's to personalize the experience or if it's to better address healthcare concerns, own that. We're tired of being surprised by the gotchas and being creeped out by algorithms. Number three is to follow through. Trust isn't earned until the follow through happens, so don't let us down, don't let your patients down. Again, I can't be more thankful to Chicago Booth Center for Applied AI for bringing all these folks together, including me. If you're building, launching, or using responsible AI, I think it's important to be around other people who are doing the same. My biggest takeaways from all this are, number one, that leadership needs to be involved. It can't just be one team. It can't just be data science or marketing or population health, et cetera. There has to be uh, some top-down involvement there. Number two is that responsible AI isn't the end game. It's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal, responsible AI should be supporting overall broader organizational initiatives to fight bias. Number three is that we should go deeper in how we partner with and involve our patients in the process. What can we learn from our patients about how they'd like their data to be used? Let's start listening to them. Links to everything we referenced are in the details below. And if you're hungry to go deeper on actual AI fairness use cases, we co-presented with Chicago Booth and you can watch the video here. We'd like to hear your thoughts on responsible AI in healthcare. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna keep up with the latest conversations that we're having in healthcare. And until we see you next time, hello.